Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.D. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. I love Big Riley. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Ultimate Spider Cast. It's the end of the month, so you know what that means. The Australians have invaded. I am Phil, joining me as always, that high priest of Conchu himself. It is. That. Hello, everybody. Yes, Ray, back to attack. That. I love another issue. How you going, Phil? Batman's number one fan. Hello, Ray. How are you? <laughs> and joining us once again, Dave from the Signal of Doom. How are you, Dave? I'm very well, thank you, and a pleasure to be on here. And uh, we're here with Ray, who's currently in candlelight, looking fantastic, uh, ready to record an acoustic double album, I'd say. And, uh, <laughs> Just, just pleased to be here, Phil, so thank you for having me on. Hey, no problem. Yeah, I know, Ray, man, it's just like, hey, everyone, it's time for another chat, yeah. He's One smoking a bowl while we're talking. He's, <laughs> he's in the groove. It's mellow yellow for Ray. <laughs> romantic, romantic setting. <laughs> saying, saying all those sexy things, Ray, like Batman, my favorite yeah. character. <laughs> <laughs> so much better than Moon Knight. <laughs> Into what do the they dark say, night, Ray, about Moon Knight? They Batman. say he's Marvel's Batman, and that really annoys you, doesn't it, or something like that? Isn't that when they say something like that? Or? Yeah, look, it's it's very, you know, the... It's the quite lame. Comparisons, yeah, it's pretty lame. Um, <laughs> you know, like to think he's, he's his own man, which we'll see at the end of... End of March, I'm sure. And it's, it's coming closer and closer, Ray. Um, is it mm. March 25th? No, 30th. 30th uh, yeah. It's, yeah, a little okay. later, but um, should be good. Can't wait. I'm going to, I don't know, I'm going to stop traffic. Blood yeah. offerings to the God Conchu and lead yeah. up. Uh, is exactly. that what you're kind of doing? Exactly. Like, you know, this candlelight is just, just one of many candles that will be lit <laughs> as, a, as a sacrificial altar. Will be, one for yeah. each of Moon Knight's personalities. <laughs> <laughs> Did nah, you hear is... Phil? Did you hear Phil about this? So there's a guy, I think it's a guy, or maybe it's a girl, who's an expert, suffers from the disorder, whatever it's called that Moon Knight has. Anyway, in real life they have it, and they're advising the writer. And I'm like, is this a pay position? Because if they're doing advice, I can be, I can advise people if they're going to pay me. I mean, this is is there cash changing hands somewhere in this transaction, Ray? Have you got to the bottom of this? No, there's no cash. It's pure consultancy for, for the love of it. So I don't think you'd wow. be in for it, Dave. You'd be... <laughs> no, you've turned me right <laughs> off. And I, wow, you've just killed all yeah. my interest in the. I mm. thought it was a lucrative venture. If they wanted someone to no. talk about vengeance, the abyss, that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the abyss. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> tell tell mean, me about vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long story. Settle down, kids. And, uh, I'll tell you a story. My but parents you know, died in Crime Alley. Oh, God. <laughs> then you get a three-hour movie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I, I shared wait. a meme the other day that was yeah. uh, it was it was Batman. It said Robert Patterson when he finds out he's he's got to disarm five hundred more Riddler trophies to finish the movie. Oh yeah, it was like Batman <laughs> that yeah. Yeah. his heads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is it kind of like that? Is it is it kind of video gamey in that sense? No, it's just dark oh. and and long. Basically, it's good, but it's I like the. Long. Dave, you sent me. I think it was you. You sent me that um, that meme with Doctor Manhattan. Oh yeah, you... that was funny. <laughs> have you seen this, Phil? So have it's like, um... no. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I shared it. Yeah, it was like you know, it's 1989. I'm seeing Batman. Yeah. It's 2005. I'm seeing Batman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they're always like, we're going to do Batman Dark this time. I'm like, just like last time. Then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you've done it before a few times. Yeah. You know, when have yeah. you ever done it? Like. Since 1966, Adam, I don't think it's ever Adam been West bright and is, happy, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's the only real time, right? The yeah. bright night. The bright Changed night, as the, they call yeah. it. Yeah. That dance. Yeah. I don't know. I thought, this, I thought this one was better than some of the ones we've gotten lately. 
better than half. I enjoyed it. No, Mm. I enjoyed it. I I gave it, look, I gave it seven and a half on Signal, but I could be argued to an eight. And I'm going to watch it again when it comes out on HBO Max with my girlfriend. Um, I genuinely enjoyed it. My back seized up one hour into the movie. And I mean, it's seized up. I was in significant pain. Man. And I'm like trying to maneuver as through a three-hour movie, trying to re-click my back in. Next to Absolutely. me was my co-host, Richard, who famously just doesn't like Batman. He was sighing in moments. <laughs> oh, you, know, you, know, no. and, you know, like I was just like, it was like live reactions from Richard, all negative, you know? <laughs> oh, no, no, Phil, no, Phil Rich, Rich would sigh at, you know, at his own birthday. He would, yeah. <laughs> <He's> he would. <laughs> Negative, yeah, negative Batman. Nancy. Yeah. I was calling. He he actually yeah. called. Um, it was so funny yesterday. We we're recording, and you know, Ewan McGregor is going to play Obi Wan Kenobi. Mm. Anyway, so Rich is like, you know, he loves all the old Star Wars. But anyway, we, we I, I introduce Obi Wan Kenobi, and he starts tut tutting and sighing and shaking mm. his head. I go, what's what's the problem, Rich? He goes, Ewan McGregor, and then he starts. He he goes. He's just a sham. And he became Mr. Family. He became Mr. Family Values all of a sudden because Hugh McGregor apparently left his wife. I'm like, he's not the only guy who's had a marriage that's broken down, Rich. And he's like, no, nope, I can't respect a man who. And I'm just like, geez. Wow. Like, so a yeah, yeah. section of the population who, you know, like for reasons yeah. of their own may not have worked out. Rich is like, no, it's a stain on his character. And I was suddenly, it was like Mr. Family Values 1950 was in the house. And I was just like, wow, we're rich. Okay. You know, and I said, still going to have to do it for the show, you know? Yeah. yeah. Yes, but yes, but uh, we have Looney, the power of Chad, uh, chiming in, says Batman Soul of the hey. Dragon was pretty campy and amusing. Yeah, the animated. I loved it. I have loved it. That? Chad. I've never heard great, of it. Great, great. It's, it's an animated one. It's an animated one. movie oh. with Richard Dragon. It is excellent. I, I thoroughly recommend this one. Okay. It's like a Bruce Lee ripoff, basically, uh, put into the Marvel, into the DC Universe. Oh, we um, spoke about this, Dave, about Richard it's good. Dragon, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's good. It's good. Um, no, I really enjoyed it. And it is kind of like a late 60s, kind of almost James Bond-esque role. Yeah. It's good. Cool. Excellent. Are you are you big into Batman, Phil? Oh, yeah. You've got a Batman <laughs> behind you. I was like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. I think Phil is a little bit into Batman. Mm. I'm a lot bit. I'm a lot bit. I'm all no, the no, way Phil, in. Like, Phil is, yeah. Excellent. Phil's, uh, you know neck deep as you should be good <laughs> as you should be i mean you're the exception ray and we'll give you an exception actually no, often, you know. hang on no phil you like nightwing more than batman don't you um yeah you by know. hair i mean i like i really like them both but yeah probably nightwing by a little bit but i do shows on both so. good, i do man. shows on both so yeah yeah nightwing's good man i mean there's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with nightwing i mean he's a damn good character and they've done oh, a lot he's with him, og you know? isn't he og robin so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i mean chuck yeah. dixon 70 issue run doesn't get much better you know, mm-hmm. set set the groundwork for for that character, um, solo. Yeah. Oh yeah, it. Bloodhaven, oh, all that. Stuff. Yeah, great stuff. Man. Bloodhaven. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, got to mention, got to mention in the movie actually. You oh, know, at the end, got yeah. Mention, oh. Right at the end, Bloodhaven. Got spoilers, right? Yeah, there were there were so yeah. there were so many Easter eggs in that movie. Yeah, there was a Did lot. Get your I hair is bristling, it. Phil. The hairs on your arms. Did that get the hairs on your arms bristling? I know. I was like, ooh, is that the air conditioning? Or is that, ooh. <laughs> I tell you who's good. Have you seen it, Ray? Have you not seen it yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. Well, have you? No, no, I haven't. No, I haven't seen it. No. Zoe Kravitz is very good as Catwoman. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, it's like she's in her own movie. She's actually very good. The Riddler is all through it, and I quite enjoyed it, but it's a very odd Riddler. It's like well, you were really, saying really that gone off the deep end, you know. Are you saying that they should have used Victor Victor Zaz? Like, why why use the Riddler? Right? I mean, I just put that out there, Ray. I say a lot of things, man. You know. No, but I mean, like, <laughs> wasn't the point? Wasn't the point that the Riddler's a little bit out of uh, again? I don't know. But he's a bit out of character. Um, whereas, Riddler's uh, totally out of character. Riddle is more crazy than he's ever been in his entire. Yeah, history. and he like wears yeah. like a mask and a suit and everything, and it's weird because oh, it's yeah, like it's like a murder yeah, mystery. Yeah. It's like why is he murdering these people and stuff? Yeah, very bold move by the create. Uh, the yeah, the director. it is good. Um, it it yeah. is good. Like it's not bad. Yeah. It's just it's just odd. You're just like wow. I guess yeah. it's like they plucked a villain out of a out of a hat and said Riddler. Okay, well, I guess we'll do this to Riddler. Call, yeah. and, you, um, you know what? The, uh, Colin Farrell is good as the Penguin. You can't even tell it's him because he has his face all made oh, up yeah. and he yeah, does he a voice. You can't even tell it's him. Yeah. You can't even tell it's him. Yeah. I wouldn't have known. If, yeah. if I didn't know it was Colin Farrell, I wouldn't have picked it in a million years. He's almost not in it enough, actually. Um, he's in it. I was it, about to say, isn't, isn't it, it starts to get a bit crowded. 
doesn't it? I mean, like, well, it's three hours. Two, it's three hours. It's, it's, three hours, it's almost three yeah, hours too, Ray. So, yeah, fair enough. It's pretty okay. good. Ray. You should see it, man. Come on, okay. yeah, Ray. Come on. <laughs> Spare three hours, or yeah, just, just say to the wife, I've, I've got, I've got business. Oh. Like, like, work. I'm like, yeah, it is work because I'm producing a show, which is bringing in cash. You know, I was, I was gonna, say, I was gonna say like he's cheating, but it's Ray. He, he would feel dirty if he went to see the Batman. Yeah. Ray's so just prime for Moon Knight. He's just so ready for uh, Moon Knight. But yeah, it's it's know, coming to HBO like, Max. Like, the, was it like the middle of next month or something? So. It okay. Is, yeah. I'll watch it. It'll I'll be watch easily available. Yeah. Uh, the comfort of my own home be good. That's it, right? But, but we, we've got Ben Riley here, though, shall we, Phil? We do. Yes. We sure do. Oh, yeah. incidentally, which I could say my figure's on the way. I totally forgot I ordered this thing. Oh. The um, the Ben Riley Spider-Man Hasbro Legends figure. Oh, really? Ooh, Lovely. Cool. Lovely. Uh, with, uh, you know, like you, Dave, I like the, the, the oh. hood. You know the um, yeah 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 the, yeah yeah. But this is the uh, awesome. this is the this costume with the wrist blasters with the, and with the black across it too. Yeah, I, I noticed oh, that's so cool. It's like the Ben Riley Spider Man yeah. suit. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Can't did, wait. You, did you ever get your Quasar yet, Ray? Still waiting. I, I <laughs> FedEx. Yeah, I ordered it like late last year. Um, is... It's coming from the UK. I've got a yeah. It's meant it, it was meant to come the end of February, but yeah. I haven't coming got from it. another dimension like Quasar himself. Well, was yeah, uh, from the quantum uh, zone? Uh, and then, uh, t- thank you. And then meanwhile, we had to, like wait over here for it, and then it finally hit the yeah. Walgreens website on a Friday. You, I ordered it on that Friday. It came to, <laughs> came Tuesday. Right. Yep. You all got cool. it. Yeah. You will and will, Matt. Yeah. Yep. It. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so no, hopefully, good. hopefully, I'll get it eventually. Yeah. You know? But I think it, I mean those Walgreens. I don't it's know if they Blacktown, don't get Dave. They're either popular or they or they sell out quick. Because I mean, I think Quasar sold yeah. out pretty quick, didn't that yeah. Moon Knight figure back however long ago sell out? Uh, oh, the Walgreen, yeah, Walgreen yeah. stuff sells real quickly. Uh, there's a really nice Black Widow as well. I think that um, it was the the OG in her grey suit with the short hair. Mm. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, I got you know, a good Black Widow once in. I was in Hong Kong. And um, uh, you know, I forget what it's called, but there's this big building and it's packed with all like sort of comic book merchandise and stuff. And anyway, I'm in there and this and this woman had it behind the counter. I don't think it cost me that much money, but it's an awesome statue of Black Widow, like um, nice. in full black leather. It's really nice. Like I was, I was glad to get it. Like cool. she probably charged me about a hundred Australian, maybe a bit less. Because I okay. was, I would have paid more for it over here, put it that way. Yeah, and um, right. a nice score from the depths of Hong Kong in this weird tower. Uh, you had to you had to bring it back on the plane. Like you had to be careful, I guess. It's carry on, wasn't it, Dave? I guess. Ah, uh, forget. Uh, was yeah, a, probably. Uh, I, it yeah, was a it figure. Was in a box. It was a figure, Ray. What do you think it was? Drugs? Oh, I brought some Black Widow back from China. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh no, I thought it was a. St- uh, I'm sorry, Dave. I thought it was a statue. Was it like uh, a statue or? It's um. Okay. It, I haven't actually got it in here with me. It's it's uh. not a figure. It's oh. a statue, but it yeah. was in a full box. And so, yeah, yeah okay. for, I'm trying to remember it was years ago, and I probably just yeah. packed stuff around it, yeah, you know, to yeah, cushion okay. it. Um, it came in completely fine. I mean, it's oh, it's nice. a lovely fi- lovely figure. I, I love Black Widow. She's okay. a survivor. You know, <laughs> black leather. I mean, who doesn't like her? Jesus. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Ben Riley and Silver Surfer. Ben Surfing, Riley. Yeah. We are, yeah. Oh, Spider-Man yeah. team up, Phil. Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. All right. That's so. great. I'll do so. I'll do some synopsis here. Yeah, just interrupt me whenever. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. all right. So, Spider-Man team up number two. Uh, <laughs> ambush from uh, March nineteen ninety six. Writers George, uh, George, Roger Stern and George Perez. Uh, Pe- Perez. Yeah, names, yeah, George Perez. Uh, penciler Tom Grinberg, inker Bill Anderson, colors Tom Smith, letterer Richard Starkings, comic craft, and editors Tom Brevoort and Bud. Bob Budiansky. Uh yeah, the George Perez. Speaking of uh, George Perez, oh. did everyone see the? Uh, uh, I don't know what. I don't, I don't think it's up yet. The, yeah, the JLA Avengers. Uh, they're putting out. Yeah, like I have the original. Yeah, yeah. I have the he original issues. Copy. Yeah, I, was, I have the original issues, but I was thinking about getting that collection because it looks pretty mm. nice, and it you know the money goes to a good cause. It goes to a good cause. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd like to get it. it. It's only yeah. a certain limited number. It's like seven thousand like or something. Yeah, I think it's twelve thousand. Wow. But um. I, I, I collected it at the time uh, mm. in, um, like, prestige, like, uh, sort of one-shot sort of things they were. I don't know how many Yeah, it was, like, were, four issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cool. Yeah, no, it's very sad. He, and there was a picture of him 
uh, today holding it. They just mm. only copy oh. what to him. I mean, he looked really, he looks really sick. He's lost all mm. his weight. I thought very, very, very sad. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you just look at the amount of stuff he's done. You know, Marvel and DC, oh. and it's just like That's massive, incredible. Did you did you hear? Did you hear this asshole <laughs> who actually said said to Kurt Busiek, who was the writer on that on that um you know that book. So he said to Kurt Busiek, "Oh, is George Perez going to finish like some some other oh, thing he did in the eighties? Yeah. Like, and, and, mm. and Kurt Busiek's like, he's you know terminally ill. Yeah. You know, if this is just a sort of like a tribute kind of thing we're doing, like, do you really? I, I hate these people who think that they have to be drawn to the, the day they drop dead. It's mm. like so mm. ghoulish to me. You know? Yeah." Yeah, like yeah, he's, he's, he's got no. These fans, you know. Yeah, he's got no obligation to do no. to finish anything. <laughs> you know? I know it's the last yeah. thing on his mind. He's probably just trying to get a few, yeah. you know, hopefully months worth of peace before he passes away, spend time with his family, etc. Yeah, yeah. And and is this guy going? Are you going to finish something from the eighties? It's like no, he's not. Like go away. Yeah. Uh, internet. <sighs> exactly. Y- exactly. Yeah, but the goal to ask that to Kurt Busiak online in open forum, like mm. the, you know, I. I seriously felt like putting a hit out on the guy personally if I could. <laughs> <laughs> why, why bother, Dave? Do it yourself. Just, like, you know, just, I yeah. think he was in the States, man. I have to do a remote, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't convenient. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, anyway. All right. So this one, uh, yeah, Ampush. The Silver Surfer is flying across space when he is suddenly attacked by a strange sh- ship that resembles a World War I biplane. Damaging the craft, he follows it back to its mother ship, Big Casino. Entering the ship, the Silver Surfer demands to know why he was being attacked. The situation is diffused by the commander of the ship, a man named Floyd Donahue, who apologizes for his flyboy's unwarranted attack. The Surfer is surprised to find that the ship is decked out to look like a 20th century casino on Earth and asks why. He learns that Floyd and all the other people aboard the ship are scrolls from the planet Cryle 4, and a society of scrolls who are obsessed with Prohibition-era Earth. As this is explained to him, the surfer looks out a window, notices a stellar alignment, and decides that he needs to leave. After accepting Ford's apology, the former Herald of Galactus departs, much to the relief of Donahue. Um, meanwhile on Earth, Spider-Man is, stop- is, is stopping a mugging, reveling in the return of being Spider-Man after thinking he was a clone for the past five years. After he saves the mugger's victim, Alice Z- Zaribak, Detective Lou Snyder, s- arrives on the scene. When the wall crawler doesn't recognize Snyder, he makes up an excuse as this police officer had had previous interactions with Peter Parker when he oh. was Spider-Man. Hi, Snyder. Yeah, oh. Oh, I didn't recognize you there for a second. <laughs> was yeah, like, this, yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. I know. Uh, I, <laughs> you think like I mean, what what kind of like excuses he come up with? Oh, sorry, Snyder, I'm drunk. I didn't recognize you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I like I like the opening banter and all that with um, Ben Riley. He's very much taken on the Spider Man moniker. I just want to go back sure. to that the beginning of the, that Silver Surfer uh, opener, and just looking back at it, I mean, I found it. <laughs> did this t- this obviously tied into the Silver Surfer tale, right? Because he departs, it must have, right? Because there's no absolutely no reason to have this as the opener. You know what I mean? Um, I think it um, when he leaves, and then when he comes back, there's a reference to some. Yeah, yeah. La- later on, yeah, there's yeah. like a yeah. footnote. It was like yeah. what one eleven or some silver surfer one eleven or something, something like that. Yeah, so it, it actually tees him up going into his silver surfer one eleven to one fifteen, mm-hmm. but it's not really connected to that as well, and it's not really connected to this story no. Uh, no. as well. No, uh, so I found like it really it. strange. I kind of, I kind of enjoyed it when I was reading it, but. Um, at the end of it, after I read the whole issue, it was kind of, it's like, oh, there were a few things happening, and there was this th- um, sub thread, but it actually went nowhere other than no. potentially leading to, yeah. So, I, th- yeah. I, th- I, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I always see team up, these team up books as like adver- big advertisements. It's mm. like, oh, hey, if you're not reading Spider Man, this so, is what's going on in Spider Man right now. If you're not reading Silver Surfer, they yeah. kind of give you a little taste Good of, point. you know, Good yeah, point. tease. Yeah. If you're a Silver Surfer completist, You'd be loving it because it kind oh, of you fills would, yeah. in the gaps between the scenes. Yeah. But you are right, actually. That's a really good point, Phil, because obviously Spider-Man is the biggest mm-hmm. name in terms of mm-hmm. eyeballs. And you're like, oh, wow, Silver Surfer's got some crazy shit happening, mm-hmm. uh, like biplanes flying around in space. That that, that confused yeah. me at first. I was like, what's going on here? And then yeah, the guy yeah, was kind yeah. of like a Humphrey Bogart and Casablanca kind of character. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, okay, yeah. Yeah. we're going to some interesting places. 
<laughs> yeah, and I think I, don't know, I forget if this is the same planet or not that he was talking about, but I know there was an old Fantastic Four where I think uh, was it the thing was on some planet where yeah, all the scrolls were like obsessed with like old human culture or something. So oh, okay, well that cool. that fits in with these guys, yeah, yeah. And I mean, probably George Perez too, but I think Roger Stern, like he he knew his like he knows his comic book history too. So yeah, he does, yeah. yeah. Does. Have you ever had him on the, any of your shows, Phil? No, I, I would love to. No, man, I'd Roger love to Stern. Get I'd love to get in. Yeah, I mean, between be, yeah. you know the Spider-Man, tough thing. to get, tough to get. Oh yeah, uh, barely has an online presence. Um, I've spoken to various people about trying to get him, and um, it's a, it's a mission in itself. Oh you yeah, know? I mean, just all the Spider-Man yeah. stuff he did, the Hobgoblin, you know, created the Hobgoblin. He did a bunch Maybe of Superman cash stuff. His way. Like, would you come on for five hundred bucks US? You know, just like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just like a cat, you know, yeah. can we, yeah. 500 bucks. Got to entice him out of his corner. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Him out of his, like, I imagine he's just kind of like lying there to just maybe counting the money. I'm not sure what he's doing. But like, then just say, hey, Roger, just sort of dangle 500 bucks in front of him on the camera and go, are yeah. you interested? I yeah, mean, sure, yeah. yeah, some of these are a half hour chat and then make it three hours. <laughs> some, yeah, some, of these, yeah, some, some of these older guys are hard to get. Some of these newer guys are hard to get. I'm trying to get uh, Tom Taylor from down there. By you guys, oh right? yeah, Tom oh, Taylor. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm I've trying to get him. To Tom Taylor. Right. I find the newer guys. Uh, I don't try as hard, but like I do find them tough at times. Uh, so like some of some are easy, some are not. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think some of them have that mindset as well, um, or they may have been told by Marvel. I mean, I mean podcasts are a good way to, to market. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, so well, they they come on to to promote all this stuff. So. Yeah, I mean the likes of you know Phil, you know Jed McKay. I think he yeah. totally enjoys coming on podcasts. To, oh, Jed McKay was great. Stuff, so yeah. yeah, you know we've got Signal of Doom. I just want to mention we've got Jerry Conway coming up next week. Yeah. Oh, he is sure. great. We yeah, me and Lil talked in. He's great. Yeah, cannot wait, man. Oh. And then a, only a couple of weeks after that, we've got Jamie Mateus coming back. Oh, on the yeah. yeah. So we're Fantastic. really looking forward to that. So. A lot of my attention is going towards preparing that. I could do these interviews tomorrow if I had to. I'm looking so forward to them. But oh, Jerry yeah. Conway, yeah. I haven't had him on before, and uh, preparer of Punisher. It's I mean, big, he's going to get a royal yeah, yeah. fanfare coming on. You know, oh yeah, sure. I, I, I we talked to him once. I didn't know where to start. I'm just like Spider Man, <laughs> Punisher. Yeah. There's like the, oh, yeah, you know yeah. Justice League stuff. I'm like, oh Tons god, god where do we start? No, I've, I've, I've formatted a whole spine to the show, so it should yeah. be pretty good. I mean, and it, James. Doom, I mean, yeah. I mean, Conway. He is. Uh, we're. I'm like. I'm like. You started when you were like 16, right? He's like, oh, I sold my first story like a couple of days before I turned 16. Wow. Wow. And it's he's crazy. Like, and he's so like six. Crazy. Some of those. And of course, Will said I had. We had to talk to him this year because he's 69 right now. So yeah. So yeah. imagine. I mean, he's been in comics from the age of 16, and now he's 69. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Man. Yeah. 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 Long to it, so. yeah. Um, it's like um, Jim Shooter. What was he like? 13 or 14? Yeah, he it was crazy. On. Crazy Legion. young. Really, yeah. really young. I mean, that's Brilliant. so young. Can you imagine Brilliant being writer. 15, yeah. 16 and getting <laughs> professional work at the like, DC mm. and Marvel and stuff? Like, yeah. they blow your mind. Yeah. You know? Crazy. But yeah. The Mateus is good. Uh, yeah, we talked to him a few times. He's coming back soon. We're going to talk all his Justice League stuff. Oh, yeah. I can't. I, I, I could have just t- talked to him for hours. So we're going to. I've got a whole second show ready to go with uh, Jamie. Yeah. I know. I, every time I talk to him, I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to talk to him about this too later because he's so nice. He comes back a couple of times. Cause, but, yeah, just a really nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, right. Ray, Ray has all the modern people on, don't you, Ray? You constantly got people going on that no, night no, show. No, not really. Jesus. No, only only not writers and, and or artists. That's all. So. <laughs> and or artists. Have you ever had Jeff Lemire on? No, I had Greg Smallwood on. Okay, but, um, right. Yeah, okay. I tried, I had tried Doug Munch. Lemire, but, yeah. Yeah. You've had Doug Munch, the creator. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah he's good. So, um, yeah, I know. I want to get Doug Munch on. Actually, he did a lot of Batman. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, he did yeah, a whole lot of that. Yeah. yeah, excellent. But yeah, anyway, no. so where are we in this? Sorry, I was going to say, but no, thank you, Ray. Ray helped us get Jen McKay when we talked to Jen McKay. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Moon yeah. Knight, a guy who runs around in a white outfit, relieving people of their facial features. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you had the guy on Ray who did that? Was it Charlie? Is his name Houston? I want to oh, say. Oh, Charlie Houston. Yeah, he's hard to get. I think. Yeah. Um, again, I've, I've been trying. I tried him and um, all the other past right. Uh, him and uh, Greg Hurwitz, I found quite difficult. Um, but yeah, I would. I'd love to have Charlie Houston on. I, I think because he's kind of veered away from. I was, yeah, just, I was yeah. gonna say he's not even in comics anymore, is he? Because no, I don't know, does yeah. he write like he's novels in, uh, and stuff too? Yeah, and he he's actually he's in um TV or. Oh, 
uh, TV, writing TV industry. So cool. I yeah. think it's once they get into that industry, it's pretty hard to get them. So. You know who's going to be coming on? Uh, well, we're actually not, I shouldn't say coming on, but we're t- I'm talking to, uh, what's his name, Chuck Austin. Mm. Um, so oh, I've been chatting to him. Uh, yeah, 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 he did a lot of X-Men and stuff and, uh, mm. and various other things. He, he's worked, speaking of TV, he worked, um, in TV for ages, uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, no, so it's 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 really interesting and um, he did a Superman run too, Ray. <laughs> oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it was like um, more like two thousand. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm sure there's someone else I'm trying to think of that I'm that I'm chatting to. Oh, my white whale is Larry Hummer. Oh. If I can get Larry Hummer, I might actually mm. stop the show. I seriously, I've spoken to him. He seems keen, but I don't think he uses the internet that much. Um, mm. uh, Not like tech savvy. Of, no, he does, but he, I, I don't okay. think he's when I say, he's not like one hundred percent of the time on. If you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and I don't want to hassle him either, but I do want him, you know, because Ray, mm. I mean, he's Wolverine, like he's Joe, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, I mean, we'd love to have him on the Wolverine show, for me. I oh yeah, Wolver- he's Wolverine, Wolverine, and I mean, he's writing GI Joe nonstop since I think the early eighties. He's still writing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'd love to have him on. He's kind of one of my white whales. Um, that I'm, you know, determined to get a one day. But never say never, you know, Dave. Never say never. No. I'm, I'm quite happy to throw cash at if he wants to come on. I'd give him, a, I'd give him a grand to come on if he was. Oh, give, oh! He, yeah, I, I would. I seriously would. I, I, Why don't I, you, you work? Why don't you work Roger Stern and Larry Harmer together? Tell, tell Larry that yeah. Roger's coming on, and tell Roger yeah. Larry's coming. <laughs> yeah, that old trick. Don't worry. I'm up. <laughs> any, I've got plenty of tricks in my arsenal. Um, yeah, but I mean. You know, with Larry, Larry's showing some interest, as opposed to Roger Stern, who's, like, living in a cave somewhere counting cash, doesn't even seem to be on the internet. Larry is on the internet, you know. We'll, we'll see. He was on MASH. I want to ask him about MASH. He, he oh. guest starred on MASH in a couple of episodes of MASH. He guest starred on MASH. Wow. He did. He wow. had a brief acting career in the 70s. Oh, okay. uh, he was an artist originally. He wanted to break in as an artist. Uh-huh. Um, and he had a brief acting career in the seventies, and then kind of made the decision to go full time into editing as well. He did a lot of editing, edited a lot of Savage sort of Conan and other things. So right. that's on my research. Um, I'm ready to go. If Larry Harmer calls me tonight and says, "Okay, you've got an hour. If that money's hit my account, I'm like, okay, we're ready to roll." Yeah. Oh, easy. <laughs> anyway, Phil, sorry. That's you okay. No, here. no. Sidetracked a little here. Sidetracked. Yeah. All right. No, it's early here. It's uh, you guys who are out for the middle of the night. All right. Uh, as he swings away, Spider-Man is once again reminded of all the things that he missed while he was on the road for the past five years, thinking he was a clone. He thinks about how he's back to square one, living in New York, free and single, while Peter Parker retired from Spider-Man to move to Portland with his wife, Mary Jane, and raise a family. As he swings away without a care in the world, Spider-Man is unaware that he's being tracked by the Mad Thinker. The villain has reverse engineered one of Spider-Man's spider tracers in order to track the hero. However, the Mad Thinker is all oh god, it's the nineties. Okay, the Mad Thinker is also yeah. being observed by another being who intends to get revenge. Yeah. <laughs> a well, revenge that has been years in the making. <laughs> That's when this the house of cards. Is I know the, the nineties is always cards. someone watching. Someone's watching them. <laughs> yeah, someone's watching. I yeah. thought the Watcher was going to be watching everyone. You know, <laughs> oh, he kind of is, but. <laughs> That's when this third observer detects something approaching Earth and is pleased to discover that it is the Silver Surfer. Emerging from a cosmic rift, the Silver Surfer thinks about his recent encounter with the Outriders and how they chose him to be their new messiah. As the Surfer approaches Earth, he is unaware that he's being observed, who intends to replay, who intends to repay the kindness the Silver Surfer granted him years earlier. While in Manhattan, Spider-Man is suddenly attacked by painful jolts from his spider sense that appear to be coming from the pigeons that are flying around him. Now, th- now this is a pretty, as far as um, tactics go, I think this is a pretty cool angle for the Mad Thinker, uh, exploiting the spider sense. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. I didn't know. I didn't know that villains and stuff knew. I always thought the spider sense was very much a, a, a personal thing that Spider-Man had. I didn't. I didn't really know that people knew about it the mad thinker is one of those weird ones where it's like you can make him know what you need him to know yeah. it's just because he's so yeah, smart he's he's so figure, smart. he figures stuff out you know he's never figured out peter parker spider-man or ben riley but he knows about all about that spider sense all uh, about that stuff yeah but yeah. i mean i've, it never, is I've never encountered him before it was my first experience mm-hmm. of the thinker I, I don't think i've ever come across him before he's yeah i don't think he's been around a lot lately but he's been like an old fantastic four villain and stuff yeah, yeah oh, okay. i always say him right. in the vault it's just always in the vault. I know. I can't remember the, the last time he actually like made an appearance because just like here, it's yeah. like, I mean, spoilers, kids. It's you know, anytime I've seen him since the nineties, it seems like he's just sitting in jail and 
you know, projecting yeah, his mind into our Android or something. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. He doesn't. He doesn't like to leave home. He likes to control the door remotely. You it's know, like, plausible it's deniability. It's not. It wasn't me. <laughs> You're getting ideas, David. How to how to <laughs> illustrate I like that hit of yours? I like it a lot. You know? I like it a lot. Yeah, just a little bit of thinking. <laughs> Ray, you'll suddenly find your body stays like uh, some robot, and you'll be <laughs> hopping on a plane and getting across. <laughs> Ray, Ray is like, I will kill for you, but I will not say I love Batman. <laughs> um, but yeah, Mad Thing is pretty cool. Um, and the, the, the idea of um, tweaking the spider traits, I mean, that I could get. The Mad Thinker, he said, oh, this is beneath me. So easy to just like tweak it to, to become the tool um, to, to do undo Spidey. And yeah, it's really cool that he um, almost does that. I didn't realize the pigeons would have such a big part in this, but they do. They do. It's uh, awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is unaware that these are robots created by the mad thinker that use devices that trigger his spider sense. After he webs up the mechanical pigeons, the web slinger is ambushed by the mad thinker's androids who knock him out with a sonic blast. When Spider Man wakes up, he finds himself restrained in the thinker's lab. The mad genius explains that he intends to experiment on the web slinger in order to learn how his spider sense works. Before he can unmask Spider Man, the thinker is attacked by one of his androids. This yeah, android. I, I always sorry, sorry, Phil. Just that moment there, you know, the moment that someone's, oh, I'm going to finally see your <laughs> real face. Oh yeah, you know something's going to happen. <laughs> so, yeah. but and I was I, wondering if, if yeah. I've ever seen them before, I will know who it is. Like I have every yeah. face photographic yeah. memory. What a so like, what little... have you never seen him before? I was like, have yeah, you seen him before? Exactly. That's know. true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Peter Parker, but I, maybe you've seen him. Maybe, but I was wondering how he, he was going to get out of this because he seemed, for all intents, you know, about to have his identity revealed. But yeah, lo and behold, as you say, yeah. Phil, um, the the cl- what, not the clone, the um, the guard it's like or whatever, cyborgy thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, I got a bit confused by what actually happened uh, at first, and then because he's like, "Oh man, this is nuts." The thinker, he's a robot. I was like, "Okay, so the thinker's a robot." What is the guy who attacked him? I, I was confused. Mm. Like it gets explained later, but at the, yeah. when it happened, I was like, "Is this one of his own robots that's mm. gone against him?" That's what I thought. Yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, so he, he told Spider-Man he's gonna unmask. Yeah, he's gonna uh, mask him. Thinker is attacked by android. This android seemingly slays the thinker, but it turns out that this is one of his android simulacrums that the thinker remotely operates remotely. The destruction of this simulacrum. Causes feedback that puts the real mad thinker, who is currently incarcerated, into a catatonic state. As this yeah. rogue android takes on its true form and explains that it needs Spider-Man for its own goals. Alright, here we go. Ni- pure 90s later, the Silver Surfer arrives in Yosemite Valley, <laughs> California, where he is ambushed by the Spider-Man. By Spider-Man. Oh. Wait, by Spider-Man, who is being controlled who is being controlled by the being who took down the mad thinker. Although the wall crawler has the element of surprise, Spider Man is no match for the Silver Surfer's superior powers. It's a bit of an unfair fight, really. When you oh, yeah, oh, absolutely like, unfair. Yeah. Christ. Like, the Silver Surfer's like, almost got any power that you can give him with the power cosmic. Even I know yeah. that. Like, I, I, know I, mean, I mean, Spider Man has taken down Fire Lord before that. So, another Herald. Yeah. So. But, but Spider Man uh, at times uh, is, you know, there are moments when he has. Um, Really big strength, like mm. and you know, not just cosmic. Sometimes they really play up how strong he is. Mm. So, I mean, potentially, I don't know enough about Silver Surfer. Potentially, could he have had enough strength to come down and snap Silver Surfer's neck? I don't know, could and especially with the, especially with that coating, can you snap the Surfer's neck? I don't think so. Yeah, I know, but oh, like I'm just saying, that would be his yeah. only chance. Though you, you'd have to, yeah. with, for Silver Surfer to beat him, you'd have to do a first strike. Yeah. And to kill him, I think. It would be the only way possible. I'm like... I'm yeah, the element of surprise. Yeah. And with, and with yeah. these stories, you're always going to be like, oh, he's under mind control. He's not moving as quick as he would, usually would. Or, That's you true. know, he's fighting yeah. it. Because I know there's a couple stories, I think, where it's like, you know, Spider-Man or Daredevil are fighting and Daredevil's like, oh, if, you know, if he was in his right mind, I wouldn't have a chance, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Oh, I think Spider-Man could clean up Daredevil. Oh, yeah. To, because cause oh, he's so much yeah. stronger, like, as well as he Agile. Is. You know? Reflexes, a superhuman. Yeah, he's not yeah, gonna. Yeah, no, he's yeah. massively. Like I, I love Spider Man. We all know that. But Silver Surfer is a different kettle of fish. I mean, he has the power yeah. cosmic, doesn't he? He's like oh, yeah. massively he pa- powered. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Could yeah. the Hulk beat him? Right? Incredible Hulk Silver in Surfer? Savage Mode. Yeah, Silver Surfer. Could he turn him apart? Oh, I don't think so. Um, I don't know. Um, the Hulk has like now been. 
the Hulk has been like really powered up like recently Good. as well with with Good. all the. If you're talking about the Savage Hulk, probably not. But then you've got the likes of uh, World War Hulk, um, mm. the Devil Hulk now, which is apparently like the worst of them all. Um, so yeah, immortal. I'd like to immortal see. Hulk. I'd like to see Hulk rip Silver Surfer apart. If I could see that in a comic book before I pass away, I'd be <laughs> happy. I'd just tear him <laughs> apart like a cheap tro- toy. I don't know. I think she, I think uh, Thor might have a better shot at. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely with the hammer. Wait, Interesting. Wait, what's this? Yeah. Maestro could take Worthy Surfer. What? Maestro. Maestro. That's that's the yeah, future yeah. Hulk. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. The 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 grizzled, um, really yeah. strong. Yeah. But is he any yeah, stronger Maestro's than Hulk in his strong. prime? Is he like yeah. Hulk in his prime? No, he, I think he is. I, don't quote me, but I think he's going to be the older that he is. Okay. Like he's just he's a little bit more wily. He's a bit more evil. Um, but I think yeah. he's is just as strong, if not stronger, than. And the again, you know, again, it's always like you know, the matter Hulk gets the stronger he gets. So. Yeah. yeah, that's it. You get pissed off if Silver Surfer was blasting him with like energy or something, and <laughs> you know, then he really start getting cranky and grumpy, like Ray as we close in oh, on yeah. midnight, kind of a bit grumpy, <laughs> <grizzled>. <laughs> kind of, kind of deflecting comments here and there, just like if you know, his, if on, his um, football team lost as well, Ray, imagine. You'd, oh, you'd they be... did. Yeah, but I oh, did. Yeah. They. Oh, no, sorry. And so you know, yeah. if you had that bitterness going for you, and you really start, right, you know, hulking out big time. Oh, awesome. I'll be, I'll, I'll be Savage Hulk. Keep, yeah. keep talking about Batman. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Subdued, Spider-Man tries to explain to the Surfer that he had no choice. That's when they are ambushed by more of the Mad Thinker's androids. Although the Surfer destroys these androids, they manage to knock him out. That's when Spider-Man's controller tells the wall crawler that he is no longer needed. However, Spider-Man returns to be mani- refuses to be manipulated and hitches a ride when the Silver Surfer is teleported away. The pair find themselves aboard a spaceship, and they are soon brought face-to-face with their captor, the living computer known as Quasimodo. Hmm. Yeah, I was unfamiliar with... I mean, I know Quasimodo... Yeah. The name and the Hunchback. Kind of funny that he looks exactly like Quasimodo in like Hunchback of Notre Dame, yeah. like yeah. you know, just by chance, I guess. Like, and like, yeah. we're going to call you Quasimodo after the you know the Quasimodo in Hunchback. Yeah. It's like, oh, thanks, thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we we see the, the the true villain, I guess, revealed. Oh, you get uh, that fancy man at the end, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, the so, well. Oh, well, they, yeah, well, remember, there's another villain, and there's another villain. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, oh, my yeah, God. Yeah. Lurkers yeah, on lurkers. Yeah. The surfer doesn't understand why Quasimodo is coming after him, only after he used his power to get the computer a humanoid form. However, Quasimodo has long since lost his physical form, and his computerized mind has long since been trapped aboard the massive spaceship called Sanctuary 2. There's your clue, kids. Yeah. Whose ship was that? The former mm-hmm. home of Thanos, the Mad Titan. I loved this mention of Thanos just getting a run. I, this came mm. from nowhere from me. I, I'm not I, I'm not knowledgeable of Marvel Cosmic, but Thanos, I was like, wow, I got I leapt to attention. I was like, awesome. Yeah, big, big, yeah, yeah. Oh, heavy hitter. Spider Man so out of his depth in this story. Like, it's always it's like, always fun though to see Spider Man in space. Yeah. I, I love it yeah, cause, yeah. Um, and I'm glad that they did that in uh, was End Game or Infinity War because mm. yeah, he's usually associated with. You know, swinging around the neighborhood, but get him in space. It's awesome. Well, the stakes are so much higher, and mm. it, having him there, in a way, for me, grounds the story weirdly. Whereas if this was just all Marvel Cosmic, I would not be interested. I'd just be like, I, I don't yeah. care, you know? But having yeah, Spider Man there is kind of that sort of like, he's like, wow, I'm totally out of my depth. Him saying yes. it, I kind of get a bit more invested. And it was cool to yeah. see Thanos turn up, too. Like, it was, it was mm. awesome. Uh,. So, yeah, Quasimodo's mind began regaining sentience during the Avengers battle with Nebula aboard the ship. With his mortality in jeopardy, Quasimodo used the ship's holographic systems to make it appear that Sanctuary 2 was destroyed. In reality, he moved the ship back to its native system until he fully recovered. Fully aware once more, Quasimodo then reveals his plans to transfer his mind into the Silver Surfer's body, regaining his freedom. Wow, go big. I mean, could you, you pick anybody. Okay. You're like, no, give me the Surfer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man refuses to let this happen, and he delays the mind transfer process long enough for the Silver Surfer to wake up and free himself from Quasimodo's hold. 
The pair then begin wrecking all of Quasimodo's monitors in the hopes of ending his threat. <laughs> that was so lame. That was so video game yeah. lame. Yeah, like, that was all the monitors like Spider Man's idea. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was bad. That was, that was, that I mean, was a low you've, point. You've got, you've got someone with the power cosmic. It's like you know what? Oh, let's just smash all the screens. You know. You know, yep. The and then the big guy turns up. The big guy turns up from nowhere. Really, I was oh, loving yeah. it. Yeah, because however, they did not accomplish much, and Quasimodo confronts them on a massive screen and is prepared to destroy them. That's when Spider-Man notices the screen is the screen is suddenly shrinking. When Quasimodo notices this himself, he realizes that to his horror, that this is being caused by Thanos, who has come to reclaim his ship. The Mad Titan shrinks the screen down to a size that can fit in his hand and crushes the device. Loved it. This I like the um, yeah, I like the panel, the the big no and the astral form, yeah. I guess, of Quasimodo. Yeah, just really well done. Yeah, because this expels Quasimodo's consciousness from the ship for some reason, sending it out into the void again. Reveling in the fact that he saved both of their lives, Thanos reminds Spider-Man and the Silver Surfer that they owe him and that he always repays <laughs> his debt. <laughs> I've got a question. I, I, I'm confused. Like, was Quasimodo in? one of the screens was that why they were smashing them and then thanos crushed them in the screen that he was in he was in the system i thought like the right the, okay. the ship system i mean unless thanos okay. just crushing that screen was just like you know symbolic meanwhile he was like mm. purging the system or something. i don't yeah i don't know yeah yeah oh. towards the end yeah i don't know whether he just since i crushed all the screens then he just made his way into one screen and he was kind of like yeah, a cornered yeah. rat I but got you. What you're saying doesn't yeah, really like he's switching between like different yeah. screens. But, okay. Uh, yeah, um, I think it's a very yeah. um, simple way of of understanding technology, <laughs> in a sense. Like yeah. Just get him dumped into a screen, and uh, well, he's like, just like the consciousness. Of, yeah. I guess that he probably didn't think about it too hard either. But like the consciousness yeah. was getting transferred from screen to screen to screen, screen yeah. until there was only one screen left, which is the one Thanos destroys. Yeah, but you kind of think of it like if it's so sophisticated, like you know, has, when he it gets crushed and he, his mm. ether goes floating out into space, surely that essence can't just be contained to screens, you know? I, I would have thought it would have been within the wires and the circuitry of, of the whole ship, and you know that sort of stuff. Uh, sure. But yeah, fair enough. It, it's a, it's a way to kind of defeat him, wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, 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 just exactly. wrap it up. Yeah, I, yeah. Great. I just got confused at the time. I was like, oh, I thought he was like on remote. Like somewhere else, and then I realized he was actually uh, in the right. ship, or yeah, he was in like the, as you're yeah. saying, in the ship system kind of thing. Like mm. he was the ship almost, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's sort of funny that Thanos just turned up, that kind of came out from nowhere for me. I was like, wow, everyone's turning up in this thing, like there's a lot of a lot big of cuts, you know, <laughs> and there are just yeah. a lot of detours as well. I mean, we'll get to one a bit later on, I mean, towards the oh, end yeah. of the film, yeah. Uh, yeah, because yeah, he sends them back to Earth, and they discover they're in a cemetery in the Pacific Northwest. The surfer explains that he has come to pay his respects to Elvin Harper. Harper was one of the few humans who befriended the surfer during his long exile on Earth, and even tried to help the surfer get past the barrier that Galactus put around Earth. The surfer oh. learned a lot about humanity when the humble scientist sacrificed his life to help stop the stranger from destroying the Earth. Spider-Man discovers he can relate to the Silver Surfer, who lost all emotion when he was made to be the servant of Galactus. He then suggests that the pair go to a nearby tavern and have a toast in the memory of Elvin Harper. I, I was love... like, who the hell is Elvin Harper? Yeah, I was like, exactly. I was like, am yeah. I supposed to know who this character is? Yeah. And then he explains it. Yeah, it's a, it's a so deep, was... that's a deep cut. Yeah, I, that, you yeah. know, this whole thing just seems like Roger Stern, like flexing his, uh, you know, his trivia muscle. It's just like, hey, yeah, look, I think you know. so. I think, or maybe he he had some. Um, part in creating this Alvin Harper to, to try to revive him. Well, and, I noticed yeah. Roger Stern did, did plot and George Perez did, did script. scripting. Yeah. So yeah. I think you're right. I think Roger Stern's probably, as you say, flexing his Marvel history because mm. uh, he he what, he come, he come probably would have read the original Marvels at the time, you know, because he came up in the 70s. So let's assume as a kid he read all this stuff, you know, yeah. had encyclopedic knowledge, uh, wrote a treatment which um, George Perez then scripts. Yeah. Which is an interesting way of doing it, and um, yeah, I mean, it was it was it was actually good because I thought it was just going to end on that. And I was like, who the hell is Alpha I thought Alpha? I thought it was going to end on that tombstone because you know I'm reading yeah. it digitally, so I didn't know if that was the last page or not. I'm, yeah. I'm going, and who who is this guy? So I'm so I was so glad that they yeah. remember the Harlem Globetrotters or someone. I was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, hey Ray, you'll appreciate this. We got a comment. Yeah, I guess they're saying Roger Stern with the Jed McKay of his air. <laughs> <laughs> Because McKay always throws in all those references. Very much the deep dives, yeah, yeah. 
I've got to say, Roger Stern for me, one of my all time favorite writers. Oh, yeah, he's great. He's great. Yeah, Yeah, I think he's just amazingly good. His his stuff is, and um, even this, which is not his best uh, as a concept, it it still works. It's still enjoyable. Oh, yeah. Mm. Did you, and did good you art, say, can I say good artwork yeah. as well? I mean, we I love the art. Work, I right? the art was yeah, really it's good. really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You notice how uh, the artist um, was it Grindberg? Yeah, he, yeah. He loved to put the reflections of the face of the character in, like, say the Silver Surfer's chest and Thanos's chest plate. Uh, I just thought it was really, really funny. I think it was his little, little signature um, to do that. But he draws a Silver Surfer along with the the colorist. Looks really good. I mean, mm. I think. The Silver Surfer would be, um, you know, unsurpri- uh, surprisingly hard to actually draw because you've got to make him look really kind of fluid and metallic and stuff. And I always marvel at, like, Ron Lim when he draws him. It's so much detail in such a simple character. But, yeah, I think I think he does really well here. Um, you know what he reminded me of? And I actually thought it might have been Mark Bagley uh, drawing because yeah. the, 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 the credits don't come up till the end. And mm. it, there, it is a bit like Mark Bagley in the nineties, like some of the Spider-Man Clone Saga stuff I've been reading, and I mean that yeah. as a compliment. I, I think it's oh, really yeah, good artwork. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Spider-Man's drawn really well as well. I mean, yeah, I, I, I so. can't fault it. Um, good yeah, stuff. Yeah, good no, stuff. And, and and Thanos looks good. Like Thanos looks really good. Yeah, more um, very very classic, classic Thanos. Good. Um, Cosimodo looks like Cosimodo. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny when they do a villain and they reference like a, a villain from another. You yeah, know, from classic like literature or something. Classic literature, yeah. but it's exactly the same. And it's just like, yeah. okay, it's just yeah. a coincidence, I guess. Like, yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling, Phil. I don't know. You're, you're quite encyclopedic. Is there a quasi? Is there a hunchback, a Quasimodo in the Marvel universe? I have a feeling there is. Uh, like, as in, I don't remember. Because uh, yeah. I don't know if it's this Quasimodo. Because I mean, I think this guy's gone through some bodies and stuff. So, oh yeah, I don't know if there's yeah. another Quasimodo or not. But uh, okay. I was, I was yeah. going to say, I got some notes here from this website. Um, yeah, yeah, the scrolls at the beginning, that's from Fantastic Four 91 through 93. So they explain mm-hmm. all about, you know, how they love Earth culture and stuff. Uh, yeah, there's a there's that uh, editor's note for Silver Surfer 111 through 114. The mm-hmm. Silver Surfer yeah. gave Quasimodo a humanoid form in Fantastic Four Annual 5. Uh, yeah. Quasimodo- Deep dives, you know, oh, like yeah. Annual 5. Like, that's early on in the piece. Like, yeah. Roger Stern was just, as you say, he was oh, having yeah. a, ball, a whale of a time. And I like the way he did, couldn't even bother the script. He's like, here you go, George. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here, here you go. Here's the idea. Like, run with this. You know? Yeah, and George's yeah. like, okay, thanks. Thanks. I won't even, he's, George is like, I won't even draw this one. I'll just, I'll just type it up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, then the uh, Quasimodo's mind was expelled from the world net by the Vision in Avengers 253. Uh... Sanctuary 2 was seemingly destroyed in Avengers 260. And, of course, yeah, we all know Silver Surfer was trapped on Earth in Fantastic Four 50. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the Fantastic Four helped them escape Earth in Silver Surfer number one. Okay, Elvin Harper died in Silver Surfer number five. That's like, a, like the, I think that's the original number oh. five. Yeah. Wow. wow. Okay. Am I right yeah. in saying that Silver Surfer, am I right in saying Silver Surfer was one of Stan Lee's favorites? Creations or something? Oh. Like, apparently he... I want to say I, I read so. somewhere that that Stan Lee like loved Silver Surfer like with a passion mm-hmm. and greenlit like a lot of series even when the sales weren't really you okay. know, huge. I, I I think I'm right in saying that. Like he, he was a big counterculture uh, icon in the late '60s. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like he was big with the hippies I wouldn't be surprised. And stuff, like yeah. stoned out of their brains, you know, like and then enjoying Silver Surfer. Yeah, I thought I heard something. What was that? That uh, Silver Surfer Black miniseries? I forget who wrote, who wrote that, but I think uh, whoever Donny Cates was, wasn't it? Was it? I think yeah, I think maybe because I think yeah. he had like a, a text page in the back, and he was like, he's mm-hmm. like, I was so nervous about this job more than any other because I was getting the right Silver Surfer, oh, and you know, okay. so I think he even said he's like, oh yeah, that's what you know, that was one of Stanley. Yeah, I know he said it's one of Stan's creations. I think one of his favorites. So I was so nervous okay. about you know, yeah, doing the. Well, did a famous didn't Mobius do a famous Silver Surfer story? I believe there's a I famous, think, yeah, yeah. There's a really famous one. I don't know what it's called, but oh yeah, Parable. Mobius draw it. Is that is that it? Yeah, Par- yeah, yeah. He is cool. I mean, I I, hmm. I think he's cool. He hasn't has he been in the Marvel universe? Was there a tribute to him in Thor Ragnarok or something? Wasn't he on the? Uh no, he's only been in no. the, the the Fantastic Four film, I think. Yes, with uh, yeah. Lawrence Fishburne. 
back when it was in Fox. But there's a character that yeah. would be cool for a. I would love to see him in the MCU. He, he'd be. Great. There's a lot of talk of wanting Keanu Reeves as uh, Silver Surfer. Oh, um, really? Which, so. I mean, look, if you a bit of CGI, special effects, These special yeah. effects though, man, more than anything. Like oh, Keanu yeah. Reeves. Yeah. Why, why do people? Can I just be? I'm going to say something now. People are idiots. Like <laughs> they, they, they go to. It's like they've got about three actors they think can do roles. It's, it's like Ghost yeah. Rider. I love Norman Reedus. I love him. Oh, but the way yeah, people yeah. just mention him, like, oh yeah, you know, he's just a lock. And they mm. do the same thing with Keanu. They don't seem to mm. notice that these guys are getting older and older. And yeah. maybe it's, it's wiser to go for a younger option because you yeah, want to get, like, there's no longevity. Yeah, there's yeah. no longevity with Norman Reedus. Oh yeah, we're talking about. Ghost Rider with um, I was talking about Ghost Rider with Brian Biggie, the big man Biggie, oh, Biggie, Biggie. Or Jester. Court Jester, Court Court Jester. Jester of the Collective, and he was yeah, he was talking, he was saying that yeah, all these uh, suggestions, uh, Nicholas Cage again, oh, Norman Reedus, sure. and I can't remember the other person, but they're all like in their fifties. Like, I tell you, Brian has got a good one. It's the guy yeah. from Sons of Anarchy, Charlie, how you pronounce his last name? He is yeah, yeah, behind yeah. him. I think he'd be good. Look, if Norman Reedus got the job tomorrow, I wouldn't complain. But it's just the way people, you know, the, the, the so-called fan sites on the internet that have like mm. about three or four actors that they just constantly yeah. pull forward for every role. Like, I like Keanu Reeves too, but I don't think he can play any role, you mm. know, and it's just like, oh, yeah, Keanu Reeves, yeah, he's definitely a lock for Silver Surfer. Why? Mm. He looks yeah. nothing like Silver Surfer. <laughs> it would be it would be CGI to the max, yeah. and I wouldn't want Silver Surfer going, Whoa, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you could, you could argue that Silver Surfer is a little bit robotic, maybe maybe wooden. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, but I, I, uh, I picture way. him speaking in kind of more like an impersonal tone. Mm-hmm. When, I, when I, I, I see this, I'm no expert on Silver Surfer, but when I've seen him, he's not the most humanized of characters. No. He's kind of a bit sort of, in this he shows more emotion than a lot yeah. of other times I've seen him. He's a bit detached, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's yeah, not, yeah, that. you know, like, you know, like, I'm sorry. The person who plays Silver Surfer eventually will almost be a no-name, I guarantee it, and it'll be mm. mostly special effects. And yeah. and these idiots saying Keanu Reeves should play him really should take a good hard look at themselves. <laughs> I kind of like it when someone I don't, I'm not familiar with plays a role because sometimes yeah, if, they, sure. if they're too big of a name, it takes me out of it. I'm yeah. just like, you know, oh, that's... 100%. Can, can we all just be reminded of a an unknown Hugh Jackman starting out as Wolverine? Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't promoted with him when he started. Oh, yeah. yeah. Greatest actor of all time. Yeah, well, we, I, I believe it. Yeah, and he mm. was known to Australian audiences, but he wasn't even a huge but name not, here. Yeah, he, he wasn't, wasn't even he, a big name here. No, no he and then he, he became did a few, massive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he became massive, and, and it just goes to show that, like, I mean, half of the people in the, like, um, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I wouldn't have known who they were, even though they'd had careers. Like, yeah. I wasn't super familiar with, say, for example, Chris Pratt. I know he'd had a career, mm-hmm. but I wasn't aware of his work until after he broke through with Guardians. Yeah. And, yeah, so there's plenty of actors. Well, he was kind of just – well, he was in Parks and Recs, wasn't he, Phil? He was That's more it. of a TV TV guy. Yeah, he was, like, more comedy. Into- yeah, he was, like, just more yeah. comedy, I think, yeah. yeah. But he broke into Hollywood as in big-budget films, I guess, with – Star what would Wars you was... What would you guys think? I'm going to pitch this to you right now because this is me and Brian talk about this all the time. If like an older actor, let's just say, let's use Norman Reedus as an example. So a name older actor plays Johnny Blaze, but the real it's only really a tease, and by the end of it, Danny Keach or whoever, or um, Robbie Reyes, whoever is the Ghost Rider mm-hmm. that, that he passes a torch to passes in torch, the yeah. first movie. So mm-hmm. you do get Johnny Blaze playing an older actor who's probably a name, and then he passes the torch to either Robbie Reyes so or So kind Danny. of, so kind of like uh, Hank Pym and Scott Lang with Ant Man. Um, so Hank Pym's generally kind of known as the original. Well, he is the original Ant Man, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about you, Phil. I, I reckon I'd be quite happy with that because yeah. number one, my favourite Ghost Rider is Danny Ketch anyway, so I yeah. don't mind the the, the mantle. Yeah, and I, and I think yeah. you could you, you could tell his story in one movie. Mm. You, you know, it's it's not that co- like you could do a really good movie and pay Johnny Blaze you off, and then you you flick it to to one of the, yeah. the you know Danny or, or Robbie whoever, and yeah. um and that way you kind of have a series, and you can always bring Johnny Blaze back in some yeah. you know in Ghost Rider, yeah. he's forever dying and coming back, and God knows what <laughs> yeah. you know, like he, he's in and out of hell, like you can't you can barely keep track. Exactly. But yeah, I, I just think Brian Biggie came up with that idea, and I'm 100 percent behind it. Yeah, I mean, if you get a Norman Reedus or Nick Cage, I think that's what they're gonna ha- they're gonna do because it seems like they like to hire like the young guys, the young people now, just so you you know you have someone who can you know fill the sure. role for ten years or more. 
Mm. I'm available. Yeah. If they want to cast me, I'm available. I'll, I'll work. <laughs> you know, I'll, I mean, I'm going to cut. I'll do twenty percent less than any other. Any other. As you know, as, as, as who? Ghost, Ghost Rider or somebody else? That's right. So, I guess so right. Silver, Silver right. Surfer. How would you handle Silver, Silver Surfer? <laughs> I, I do it real robotic, like, I've yeah. come to this world. <laughs> <laughs> this world must burn. I am the Herald of Galactus. I find right. Silver Surfer, frankly, one of the most boring characters ever. But, <laughs> but um, like, I, I, I'm not a Marvel cosmic guy. But here, yeah. he's quite good. You know, limited yeah. doses for me with Silver Surfer. It's hard with the Silver Surfer because I think because he's so powerful. And so how do you make it, like... You know, in this instance, in this story here, Phil, he actually yeah. he's his own undoing. Yeah, he, he he releases so much energy that he burns himself out, and um, uh, you know, and that's how he gets incapacitated. Well, at so, one point yeah. he just creates a tree to do something. They just go, oh, he just yeah, he can, a tree he can, to do something. I was like, yeah, is there nothing grow. this guy can't do? Like, no, no, yeah, <laughs> he's uh, pretty cool. Yeah, you you gotta have a pretty good writer on a story when the character's pretty, you know, like pretty po- all powerful like this. Yeah. So. But have they ever only... done? the storyline yeah. where it, look I don't know his power limits but like Silver Surfer goes to try to stop like world hunger or famine or something like uh, has he ever, have they done that story because that's a story that's um, no, not that I no, I mean, no. Well, why not though like if I was yeah. if I was there I'd be like yeah. if I was on it for say five issues I'd be like you know I've got this arc where Silver Surfer yeah. tries to cure the world's ills and you know that, I think that'd be an interesting story yeah because his power is so don't untapped. get me wrong yeah, don't get me wrong. Maybe, maybe that's what Parable's about. I can't remember. I read it sure. ages ago. Um, okay. It was a bit more of a left field kind of thing. But also, just going on the fact of that, not only just overpowered, but I think uh, you're right, Dave, in the sense that he's, for me, I love him. I love Silver Surfer, but his personality is a little boring as well. He's a, he's a little bit just dull in that sense. He's just flat as a tack, right? He doesn't have yeah. a personality, right? You're being kind. You're being nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, I mean, because if you look at it, the likes of Spider-Man, you've got relationships. He's kind of like um, happy-go-lucky. Daredevil's got his relationship issues and stuff. Yeah. So that makes the characters interesting. With Silver Surfer, he kind of goes around. I, I like it when he get, gets into um, uh, he's talk, talking about his home world and he's lost mm. love and he seems to have this – Almost obsession with this this um, I can't remember her name Phil his woman oh sh- was uh, it Shala Bella or something sh- yeah um, he sometimes sees her in other women so he's a little bit right. yeah <laughs> back when he had a personality in a life yeah. you know yeah. I mean, it's an interesting story I mean the actual mm. I'm sure in the in the movie Fantastic Four series which they'll eventually do it'll be quite interesting it, it is quite an interesting mm. story that he was a herald of Galactus. Yeah, he came to sort of say the world's gonna, I assume, burn, and then sort of like sees there's value in the world, et cetera, et cetera. Like it's it's an interesting storyline for me. It's just yeah. the continuation. It's yeah, like yeah. After you do those basic beats, like you know, you can't. I can't see myself churning through seventy issues of Silver Surfer like we can read uh-huh. Nightwing because uh-huh. Nightwing is a character where there's so many storylines you can pump yeah. in. It's so grounded. Yeah. Like there's almost no stopping point. Yeah. Silver Surfer as a writer, I'd run out of ideas by probably about issue ten. Yeah, yeah. I, I think. I don't know. My my personal take would be Silver Surfers. Um, the the joy of it would be um, the what he sees, you know. So it's exploration of the cosmic uh, rather than him himself. Sure. Uh, and for me personally as well, I just I'd like to see him. Um, I just love seeing him unleash his power because you know he's so sure. powerful. So those are the other things. But the actual personality and and character development itself, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I think is a little underdeveloped compared to some other characters. Yeah, I think on his own, it's it's not as good. But yeah, like you yeah. put him, you know, either when you see him through the lens of either his enemies or like, you know, mm-hmm. you give yes. him allies. Yeah, I, he, you can't just have or, or the surfer have, by himself. You have to have him playing off somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Like even the, 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 the Infinity Gauntlet saga, that was great because he mm. was in amongst it, mm. but he was surrounded mm. by other heroes. And yeah, stuff. that was cool. Strange and stuff. I, I yeah. will say this. I've, I've not read it, but a lot of people speak very highly of Dan Slot's Silver Surfer run, and it has some oh, parallels and, to yeah. Doctor Who. Yes. Well, so I mean, I, I'm I not know Doctor that a lot Dan, of people but, praise yeah. that. Yes, his run is phenomenal. I've read it almost all in one sitting um, because it was just so... Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite long. It was all on Marvel Unlimited. Is, it is all on Marvel Unlimited. I, I didn't just read it. Just in a room, right, and say to the wife, you know, I'm, leave me alone, I'm reading the I entire did. Silver Surfer run. She's like, oh, great, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> 
throws a shoe at you. <laughs> Knock it on the door. What are you doing in there, Ray? Nothing. I'm reading. <laughs> I think I'm reading some stuff. I leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is a good run. I don't know. I, I loved it. I didn't know what to expect. Um, and apparently it's very Dr. Whovian, but um, I'm not... I'm not a fan of Doctor Who, but I just I found it a, a really fun, really good run. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So we might do it on Signal one day, actually, because yeah. I, I, I wouldn't mind reading it myself because I've heard mm. it's good. Mike Orreg on art, isn't it? Yeah, oh, the art is, anyway. is very good. Yeah, I didn't read I it. Love Mike Orreg's art. I'm a really big Mike Orreg fan, actually. Yeah, I didn't read it either. But didn't they give him like a human companion? You know, like so he was with some woman yeah, or yeah. something. So oh, again, what's his you name? Know, we're playing Starts off like human, yeah. Yeah, Daisy, Dorothy, or something. Yeah, I can't remember. She's got a polka dot dress. It's all, yeah, it's good. And are you with, with me and Michael Rhodes art, right? Because I love it. I think it's oh, it's, it's so phenomenal. Yeah. It's phenomenal. I, I I absolutely devour it every time I see yeah. it. Yeah. I, I find honestly, he's uh, like uh, there's a lot of artists I like, but but just his style. I will yeah. just read anything that I see him him do because I just love his artwork. He did ecstatics. And I bought mm-hmm. the omnibus, and it's oh, brilliant nice. artwork. Nice. You know, and Peter Milligan writing duties and him on art, it's great. Yeah, it's well, I'd love to start re- reading that as well. Uh, I think I, Good. I collected a bit of Mad Men. Uh, he did yes. Mad Men, which yeah, is he did. That really, was his own, own thing. Yeah, that's what kind of got me into it. Um, but yeah, really good. Worth it. So we're going to get rankings film. of this? Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, Dave, go ahead. Give us your ranking. What do you think? Uh, well, um, if, look. Mid ninety stuff for me can be challenging. I I, I know at the time, especially Marvel. I, I I know why at the time I wasn't buying it because I always felt like you had to be reading forty five other titles. Um, and but on this side of things, I think it was a pretty good story. It got better at the end with Thanos. Um, I'm not a silver surfer guy, but I was invested enough. It was only I looked at the cover price, two ninety five US. I'm like, okay, that's not too much. If I'd bought this at the time, I would have been like, okay, I'm going to give it. I mean, maybe this sounds a bit harsh. I'm going to give it six point five, um, and I mean, it, it almost is a seven. Um, but for me, I find some of these mid nineties Marvel stuff a bit hokey, and especially bringing in the cosmic stuff for me is never a big plus for Marvel. But Spider Man and Ben Riley, I thoroughly enjoy. And in fact, I thought this is kind of more of a Silver Surfer story with Ben Riley in it. Um, I'm going to give it 6.5, but I, I did enjoy it and I particularly enjoyed the artwork. And I find sometimes in the mid 90s stuff, the artwork, especially in Marvel, really drove me away where I felt that the stories were very thin. This actually did have a backbone of a story. So I'm going to give it 6.5, which I think reflects kind of where I am on it. All right, Ray, what did you think? Yeah, I. Can't disagree with what Dave said mostly. Um, yeah, I was thinking about giving it, yeah, maybe a, maybe a six actually. Uh, mm. just, uh, I, I did love the, I think the art elevated it. I think it was good. Um, it's just really, it's really hard because of the nature of the issue as well, being a team up. And as you discussed, uh, and mentioned Phil, that it kind of uh, is a bit of a promotion for other titles and mm. Silver Surfer. So I found that kind of detracted. Um, mm from the overall uh, cohesion and flow of the story. Uh, I love the, you know, I love the deep dives. They're great. But as I mentioned at the beginning, I found the the Skrull interaction with the Silver Surfer um, not really that necessary for this part, you know, uh, other than just trying to tie in, you know, references uh, from other runs. Uh, so that I found a bit disjointed. The stuff at the end with Albert Harper, like again, it's a deep dive, but it's it's just so signposted as being a deep like as being a reference to something else. It has very little to nothing to do with the story, other than Silver Surfer, you know, wanting to visit the the tombstone. Yeah, I think it was and just sure. I think it was just his excuse to get the surfer to Earth. You know, why was Silver yeah, Surfer coming to Earth? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that that's it. And then we don't do we really need then two two or three pages of of cap recap of who this Harper person was. You know, uh, other than those that really do love um, deep diving into Marvel history. Uh, so six, yeah, I think. Uh, I-, I love seeing Ben Roll in it, and-, and I like seeing the Silver Surfer. I love them having a, a showdown. Um, that was fun. Uh, the-, the Mad Thinker was, was good. Quasimodo was a fun enough villain. Uh, good to see Thanos in there. But, yeah, just it-, it didn't flow as well for me as other issues. So, yeah, six. All right. Um, 
I don't know. I'll probably go the the seven. Just be. I mean, I liked it. I I get everything you guys brought up. Uh, yeah, I read this when the, when this was new. I mean, I thought it fit in with the Ben Riley stuff good at the time. Uh, mm-hmm. Silver Surfer is always like hit or miss with me. You know, depending who's writing it, what the story is. You know, either love it or don't. But I mean, I thought this one was good. But again, it's the nature of again '90s comics. Yeah. We're trying to promote probably the Silver Surfer's book. And even though it's like an it was a little extra sized issue, cause like these were, but it's like I'm sure I think the assignment was probably okay. You got to do this whole story, and modern comics could never do this. Okay, you got one issue, get it done. You know, mm. got to start it and finish it in one issue. So, but thank yeah. God it wasn't multiple issues. Oh because, yeah, yeah. You know that's I will say oh, that's actually a good point. Yeah. Now, now, like today, the, mm-hmm. this would have been strung out to like four, yeah. five, six issues, and it, yep. without any, without any extra value. So yeah. at least they can. It would be a compressing this down. Yeah. yeah, compressing this down actually helped. I think. Yeah. You know, I'd, I'd be giving it less if I had to read four issues of them. It's just this story. I'd be like, God, no thanks. But <laughs> I, I, um, I, you know, I, I appreciate that they managed to cram it all in, and it didn't feel yeah. rushed. If anything, it felt slightly padded. You know. Mm, yeah. No, it, it was not. It was. I mean, by no means. And I was saying, like, you know, the flow of it. Uh, I enjoyed reading every page. I wasn't checking yeah. the page numbers. Just let's just say that I was just, you know, just enjoying it. Yeah, but yeah, I know I have this in floppy, so I know. Yeah, it's a it's a little thicker than like a, nor- a normal size book at the time. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think yeah. the team ups they were giving them a little extra space. So yeah, yeah, cool. And this was a Spider Man team up series, wasn't it? So every issue was a Spider Man team up with different people. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Sure, lives though, cool. wasn't it? About yeah. seven issues. From what I see, unless I yeah, think, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, but it, yeah, oh, like that, like the really. yeah, because we didn't cover the first issue, right? Because that was that it was actually Peter Parker teaming up with the X Men, like right before he left town. Ah, cool, yeah. nice, yeah. cool, yeah. Um, no, it's it's a uh, they should do a Wolverine team up now, you know. Oh, um, I I love I love the team love up team books. Up I love books. anthology books. They should bring back more um, Marvel Comics presents or something. Yeah. Well, those are great. Those sorry. well, Marvel's been doing those black, white, and bloods, which uh, you know, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. actually, yep, and th- they seem to be those anthologies. Now, yeah, I only, I've got yeah, a... I, I only just started reading the the Wolverine, mm. uh, black, white, and blood, and that looks that's really cool. Uh, so it's yeah, cool. you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah. The new I've got a question for you guys before we go. Are you guys? We're doing it on Signal. Are you guys reading the X Lives and X Deaths of Wolverine? Yeah, I've doing? been reading it. Yeah. No. You think it's been getting better? I think it's been getting better as it goes on. Yeah, I think it's a whole lot of setup because I mean the X Lives is you know for Ray uh, Omega Red's basically going through time trying to kill like what like Charles Xavier's uh, ancestors, Charles so, Xavier's like oh, father, wow. grandfather, and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. Wolverine's yeah. been trying to stop him there, and then X Deaths the whole Moira McTaggart like Mystique's trying to kill her, so. Like a future yeah. Wolverine's the coming. Phalanx Wolverine. Yeah, like from, from the, the future. future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not bad. I, Ray, I think you'd probably enjoy it. It I starts out, it, yeah. we were pretty critical early, but I'm I'm starting to quite enjoy it, actually. Okay. Um, Ray, I think it's worth checking out, man. It's, okay. it's like a weekly no, no, event. Sure. Benjamin Percy's writing it. He's, um, he's very strong, yeah. Percy, yeah. Yeah, so. it's look, and it is a slow start, but okay. I just thought I'd mention. So, Phil, you're kind of enjoying it? Yeah, I like I said, I think, it, I think it just took it a while to get going. But, yeah, I, I've been enjoying it. Sometimes with this stuff that's every week or every other week, sometimes I, I, I – like they're doing it with Detective Comics, <coughs> Batman right now. Uh, I mean, uh, like Detective Comics is weekly. I don't know if like they – modern comics, they take their t- more time now when it's weekly, so it's – Sometimes it seems slower, but yeah, oh yeah. Once this Wolverine thing starts, yeah, it, it's it's mm-hmm. it's going to be really going along now, pretty good. So, no, it's interesting. It's it's kind of um, I've sort of I'm a huge Wolverine fan, as I know Ray is as well. And um, yeah. it's it's I I think it's good that Marvel are finally starting to put him you know front and center a bit. Mm-hmm. Like it's God, it's like they're really fucked around with Wolverine over the over the last say five years. Like yeah. it's taken them a long time. I don't yeah. think they realize what a good character they've got sometimes. So they're, they're just idiots. Well, just like, with, they, they spam all the other crap characters, but like, forget about Wolverine. Well, just just with the way they have the X-Men right now, they they have so many characters, I don't think they know what to do with them. So that's what uh, we right, say. Yeah. They need to like pare them down again, you know. Mm. I agree. I agree. Well, it's, 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 it's rebooted my... Like, I will say this, uh, and Richard complains every single issue, but <laughs> we keep slogging. Like, I honestly think Ray, that you would enjoy this. I, yeah, I think yeah, this is something for, in your wheelhouse, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah I, I know. It was just because um, 
yeah, the whole Hickman taking over the mutants and stuff, it was just a bit too overwhelming for me. Um, sure. So, like, I, I read Powers of X and House of X or whatever, but that was about it, um, just the setup. And you have all these, like, there are a bazillion titles. Oh, there's um, yeah. they, they all ignore kind of them, just, just together. focus on the... Yeah. Like, yeah. I've got a question, Phil. Do you hmm. know who the guy is who's kind of behind the scenes? I thought it was Black Tom Cassidy, and I was like, why the hell is Black Tom Cassidy so evil? Is that, an, is that a known villain, that Russian guy? Is that someone I'm supposed to know? Oh, um, I, I know. I think he's made a few appearances, but he first appeared. That's uh, Colossus's brother. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay, I did not know that at all. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, right. And he's a mutant too. Yeah, I think he... I'm trying to remember what his powers are. It's like, I don't know if he like can do weird stuff it's, with reality kind of, or something. Be spoilers, right? It's, 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 it's not that big a spoiler, right? This guy turns okay. up. He's kind of the guy pulling the strings. Yeah, and um, Omega Red uh, seems to really, for some reason, like I'm like, since when is Omega Red like the biggest bad guy in the world? And he's he's mm. he's going through all the past lives, doing all this shit. It's it's pretty interesting. Like, yeah, you know, yeah they were they're doing stuff with out. him and like X Force and stuff. So yeah, they they've been setting up the Omega Red thing for a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyway, yeah. so you gave it seven. Ray gave it six. I gave it six point five. So we're all around about yeah. the same. You know, we're around the same point of each other. Yeah, I think we all agree. Yeah. All right, that's should, it. All right, should we get out of here? Ray's falling asleep. Yeah, Ray's yeah, falling yeah. asleep. I'm, I'm just <laughs> warming up. Angry. I'm just warming up. But no, Ray. <laughs> Ray's had a few. He's 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 copped a few a few you know a few hits and misses today, Ray. Haven't you? You fended a few blows off. You know. Oh, I did. I did. Deflected. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go good. back and sacrifice a virgin to Conchu, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's, that's, that's what, what you gotta do, Ray. Appease, but, appease the gods. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Cool. That's, He's waiting for that Moon Knight Black, White, and Blood that's coming in April. Yeah, yeah, um, oh, I definitely am. Um, yeah, but like I said, again, uh, highly recommended uh, Wolverine's Black, White, and Blood. Yeah, I've got yeah. Uh, no, I yeah, I've got I've got issues of it to read. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, Ray, you know who you should target? You know how Signal <laughs> Dooms, uh, other than Larry Hummer, our biggest one is Hugh Jackman. If we can get Hugh Jackman on. Hmm. Well, that's my goal one day. You you should get um you, your goal should be Oscar Isaac. Come oh yeah. Try to get Oscar on. Yeah, well, for what? sure. I mean, you're the premier Moon Knight podcast out there. Yeah, come on, Ray. Make so, it happen. Uh, make it happen, Ray. Come on. Okay. Make, it, make it happen. I'll, I'll, I'll try. try get, get into, I, 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 believe you me, I'm, I'm trying every angle I can with Hugh Jackman. Um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> Maybe I'm, we can I'm, say that we know Hugh Jackman and then Oscar can come on. <laughs> so, yeah. those big those big so, like, names those big names i think you have to like find who the representation is and yeah you know, you know, the agents and stuff yeah or oh, or you yeah. have or you have like a little just by chance a little roundabout connection yeah you know, either mm. this, you know yeah of course you have to get in touch with the representation yeah. and stuff and um but i mean I, it seems to me that with this moon Knight show they'll be doing the full court press you know, in terms of uh, promoting, it's, and you are the premier Moon Knight podcast, come on, right? The so Moon Knight podcast, ITK. yeah. Yeah. I do, well, there's a second one out there now, so... Well, yeah, you were the uh, original. A pretender, a pretender to the yeah. throne, Ray. A pretender to the throne. <laughs> Have they you been know, around? You should, be, you, you should send them a cease and desist letter, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know what to do. I love it. Uh, right. But yeah, no, I was going to say real quick, yeah. yeah, those those Black, White, and Bloods are good right now. The, the Electra one's out. I think there's been two issues mm. out. That's Is that, really good. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't. I'm, cool. You know, I like my Daredevil Electra. At least you know, semi interests me. But like she, um, she's really good in the current Daredevil. Like uh, I, I like her there. So yeah, she was really good in the like, episode of Punisher where Frank and her went on a date and had sex. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> one of the best appearances of Electra ever. I was like, <laughs> it was, did you did you guys see? I forget what the guy's name is. The guy who does Savage Dragon. He came out the other day and was like saying Harry how Glass. like. Eric Glass, and he was like taking a blast at Punisher, saying how Punisher's always been gay and never dates women. And people were listing all the women that he's been with over the years. It's not hundreds because he's, he's mourning his dead wife, but it's like, hey, yeah. Eric Glass, and go read a fucking comic. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and Electra was mentioned. Electra was mentioned as one of the women. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just like, yeah, stop taking shots at Frank Castle. Like, his, his family's <laughs> dead. You know? <laughs> he's... He'll turn up oh. at your doorstep and punish you for this comic. That's it. That's well, it. Yeah. All right. Well, listen well, to Signal of Doom, kids, if you want more of this humor. Signal of Doom uh, and Into the Night for Ray, isn't it? Ray? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I'll, that's what I was going to say. Okay, let's do the plugs. Okay, Dave, let's tell, the, tell the kids about Signal of okay, Doom. Okay, oh, Signal of Doom weekly podcast. Myself and Richard are on. 
Um, it's comic book, comic book movies, pop culture. Obviously, anything Bob Dylan or Frank Sinatra related gets involved as well. Our continuing mission is to get Hugh Jackman on the podcast. And um, we have plenty of guests on. Um, we we're about to have Jerry Conway on, uh, Joe DiMatteis, Chuck Dixon's going to come back on again. So, yeah, we have a good time. Um, and we generally do like two, three hour shows uh, every Friday night. So, yeah, uh, enjoy and come come aboard and see the doom on Twitter. And, yeah. More than welcome, and we've also got the Facebook page as well, Season of Doom. So. Nice. Cool. All right, Ray, you do a few podcasts. Well, Ray, do you do podcasts? Uh, uh, yeah, a, a little. Yeah, a, a few. Look, the best way to contact me is on Twitter at Ray Ray Pod, R E Y R E Y Pod. I was Ray before that other Jedi. Anyway, um, <laughs> check out uh, Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Uh, also, to know who is to fear her, Spider Woman podcast, and Last Sons of Krypton. The Superman mm. podcast, all, uh, you know, I get my, my hands dirty with all of them. Uh, I love it. Um, any questions? I'm always happy to talk comics. So just, yeah, Ray Ray Pod on Twitter. And he loves Batman, kids. Yes! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Ray, audio does not lie, okay? Batman, my favorite character. <laughs> I love Batman. <laughs> Uh, Dave, I told—I think I told you—I can play him saying the most ridiculous things. He doesn't care. The only thing that no. bugs him is those Batman drops. That's the only thing that he's like, "How well, dare you!" Ray, I, yeah, I, I think I did Ray say in his old age is slowly right. warming up to Batman a bit more than in his younger years. Right from conversations we've had over the years, mm. I think you slowly have warmed up slightly to Batman. Am I right yeah. in saying that? You're, you're not uh, a hardcore you, you'd probably, fan, but you know, no, you'd, you'd probably be right. You know. As well, I mean, the story goes that I had a, a rivalry with mm. one of my high school mates. He was a, a keen Batman fan, and I was a, a Wolverine fan, and so that that's that great. turned me against Batman. Just to, that's a big rivalry, though, because yeah, that's a big rivalry because Wolverine's awesome mm. as well. So you know what mm. you should have done? You just said, "Let's let's fight it out," and you strap on a pair of claws, and he comes at you <laughs> with a bat suit. And you got just it's just the winner that's takes it. all. You know, throw your batarangs. Been, yeah, exactly. If I'd been there, I could have been like, "Okay, guys, we're going to go blood sport." Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna really make a maybe film it or something as well. Be awesome. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. a little warming up, warming up to him a little. Yeah, and your cold dead heart, you you know (laughs) this heart that's that you know totally given over to Conchu, undead Conchu heart. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Well, thanks so much for having us on. Hey, no problem. And I was gonna say, Dave, if you want to join us next month, we're gonna be doing all right, Ray. You've been waiting months for this. The return of Kane. Oh yeah, I'd be yes, down for that. Kane's I'd love good. to do yeah. that. Yeah, I love yeah. Kane. Oh yeah, yeah so. Dave, he's a lurker's lurker. Yeah, he he's going to be great. He is. For he it. Is. And, and I, you would have done um, when when I get James Demetrius on, I'm going to ask him a question about Judas Traveler. <laughs> <laughs> I've already warned him. I've said I'm going to ask him about uh, Judas Traveler. So you know, get ready. Oh yeah, my gosh, yeah, I yeah. love that character. I'd, you know, I'd, I love I'd, that I'm character. I'm going to listen <laughs> just to hear his reaction. To your question. The reaction of eyes rolling back in their head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So yes, kids. Next time, next month, the return of Kane. It's a four issue storyline. Uh, so yeah, send your thoughts. Email us capesandlunatics at gmail dot com or call the voicemail six one four three eight two two seven three seven. That's six one four thirty eight capes. Uh, remember, you can follow Ultimate Spider Cast on Facebook, on Twitter. Join the web of Spider Man. Nah. Facebook fan group now at 3.6 thousand members. Uh, find links to our YouTube channel, our Patreon, uh, uh, early access to creator interviews. Uh, Lilf and I talk to the man himself, Mr. DG Chichester, every month about one of his comics. I got the good mic out for you guys. And uh, Patreon only, we're finding the worst superhero movie of all time. We're doing them bracket style, one against <laughs> one every month. Uh, yeah, March. Really? Mar- yeah, March is going to be Blade Trinity versus Electra. So, yeah. So, is the worst one? Yeah, at the end of the year, we're going to crown the worst one. We've been doing two. Like in January, oh, it was Howard the okay. Duck versus uh, there's a, that nineteen nineties Captain America movie. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. vote Electra being worse F4. than Blade Trinity. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Ray, February was uh, the 2015 Fantastic Four versus X Men Apocalypse. Yeah. Oh, Fantastic um, Four is, is far worse than X Men. Apocalypse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd agree with you as well, Dave. Um, Electra is probably worse than uh, was it Blade Trinity. Yeah, yeah, Blade yeah. Trinity. I mean, uh, look, I enjoy, I enjoyed both. I hated the wrong. Dracula. I hated the Dracula on that Blade Trinity. Yeah, that's. I strong, love yeah. Jessica Biel and Ryan Reynolds. I'm sure you do, Ray. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> might go far it up now, actually. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. So what's that on? What, what, what's that uh, on? that's our Patreon. Yeah, the movie thing. Yeah. You've got like a million shows. I find it so. It's like, <laughs> my God, I don't know how you sleep. Got to go. <laughs> sleep. What's that? No, I got to keep up with sleep. Ray. Come on. Yeah, oh, I know, Ray. Fish bosh. He's, he's a powerhouse of Australian podcasting. You know, Reels. we're just surfing in Ray's shadows here in Australia. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> 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 got, to, got to keep up with Ray and uh, Russell from Terms of Evil. Yeah, Russell. Oh Russell. Russell's a new kid on the block. He's, he's a startup uh, merchant. Yeah. He just, he just, he just starts up so many. I shows know. I know, man. I, I just like, he started up that Hulk podcast. That that was pretty. Mm. I listened to the first episode. That was pretty good. Yeah. I keep it simple. I just do signal. I guess I have a couple of spin-offs, but signal's the main yeah. base. You know, I keep it signal. You yeah. know, it's signal HQ. HQ. We just churn it out. You know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, if I find that all that mer- and merchandise at uh, Linktree, l i n k t r dot e e slash capes and lunatics. All right, let's get out of here so Ray can go to bed and dream of Jessica Biel. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> all right, guys. Hey, thanks, guys. Uh, yeah. No all right. Hopefully. Fun. Again, these guys will probably be back next to it, you know, as long as they want to. They're back next month oh, for the return of Kane. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I love Kane. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is it on? Evil All right, kids. Until then, swing on back. Ray, give me the whip, like a little flip, flip, whip. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on killing.